future, talk radio will actually educate, inspire, and make you think. The future is now. Topics and music that affect your life. From Universal Broadcasting Network. Tune in at ubnradio.com. This is Pure Polino on UBN Radio. Stargazer, food taster, fun chaser. Indulging in the culinary creations from the top restaurants and top bloggers across the nation and around the globe. Charting the course for people and celebrities over the entire astrological universe. Chasing down fun around every street corner. Pure Polino starts now. All right. Happy Thursday, everybody. My name is Michelle Polino, and welcome to Pure Polino. It is a um, unfortunately gorgeous day in Los Angeles. I am so sorry, East Coast peeps. I feel you. I feel you because I lived there for 17 years. I get it. I've been stuck in um, massive snowstorms, so I'm feeling you. Um, today, we have a pretty special show uh, to warm the cockles of your heart. And if uh, if they need warming, and if you're in Southern California and don't need warming, well, you'll still love the show. I, in the wake of successful the successful state bird provisions in San Francisco, it was kind of inevitable that a restaurant with a similar theme would show up in Los Angeles. And Steph and Chef Stephen Fretz <laughs> didn't disappoint with the church key. It's American dim sum wheeled through the dining room on carts and cocktails whipped up by servers in Pan Am uniforms, table side. So Chef Stephen Fretz is here with us in studio today to talk about the concept of food and the entertainment factor. Plus, Julie Wolfson is back with a report from the Fancy Food Festival. If you don't know what that is, it is one of the most important food festivals in the entire country. It is, it is the food festival that helps stock all of the supermarkets across the country. So important and we'll find out what is hot and what is not and what we're going to be seeing on our shelves in the next uh, year or so in 2014. So Julie Wolfson will be here with us and that's not all. The today, today's show is pretty packed. We're also going to have a very very good friend of mine, author and radio personality Lorraine Rinaldi. She's going to be with us momentarily. She'll probably be calling in any second and then of course we're going to get to the foodie five but Lorraine is host of Cucina Chatter which is a uh, a food radio show and she's also the author of a book called gravy wars we're going to be talking to her because she's an MC of the food and travel show uh, in Philadelphia this weekend and it's sponsored by the Philadelphia Inquirer it's going to be held at Valley Forge it's definitely a place you want to go to you definitely your kids are probably driving you nuts and you want to get out of the house East Coast so this is the place to go to and Lorraine's gonna be here to tell us all about it she's calling in in just a few minutes but first we're gonna to get to the food oh no she's she's here right now all right put her on so here we go Lorraine Bernali are you there sweetheart I am here hey Ooh. Michelle hey Lorraine how are you I'm doing well, and you? Good. So here's a little backstory on Lorraine and I. Lorraine and I did traffic way back in the day. Way back in the day. It was horse and buggy traffic. Right, that's right. It was, uh, it was Amish country traffic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no. Uh, we, were, we worked together at Metro Traffic. Was it Ma- Metro Shadow? Mm-hmm. I can't even remember. They, they changed names so many times. So I right. Can't keep up. Right. So now tell us a little bit about, first, Gravy Wars. Tell us about your book. Okay, so a few years ago I published, you know, Michelle, I'd always, I'd done a lot of writing. Aside from radio, I was doing a lot of freelance work, writing, uh, doing a lot of ghost writing for other people, and I'd always wanted to put together my own book. And the only thing I felt passionate enough about was radio, but if I wrote that book, I would have been blacklisted and never worked again. Right. Which may not have been a bad thing. So I didn't write that (laughs) book. I I still haven't written that book. (laughs) But um, Christmas Eve one one year I was uh, I, I was kind of getting all you know can I use the terminology I was getting agita because people agita. were coming in. <laughs> I know what agita everybody's, is. Yeah, everybody's gathering in the kitchen. It was getting on my last nerve, and and I'm getting all hyper because everything's not ready, and you gotta have everything just so, and I'm laughing too at the same time because. I've completely bastardized our Christmas Eve tradition. The seven fish became five fish and some meat and a lot of pasta and some finger food, and you know. And so I started thinking about that, and I said, you know what, this can be a really funny book. So 
I thought I'd put together a cookbook, but it turned more into a book about the Italian-American culture as I knew it growing up. And as it turns out, pretty much as everybody's story who grew up Italian-American in the United States, or from what a lot of friends tell me, you can take out the Italian and substitute Spanish or Jewish or anything. And the, the idiosyncrasies, the family dynamics, they're all the same. And it, so it, was, it ended up being a funny book, uh, Gravy Wars, South Philly Foods, Feuds, and Attitudes. So <laughs> thank you for the plug. I'm still still hawking that, you know. No, no, no. It's awesome. I love that uh, the idea, because if you did grow up on the East Coast or – even in the Midwest, I still hear it. There's always the argument of is it sauce or is it gra- is it gravy? And it's right. it's a very passionate, um, uh, I think, discussion in every Italian household yeah. or not Italian. Oh, um, people it, go nuts on it. Do you see all the discussions on Facebook? I'm sure you have seen. It. I oh have. I gosh. have. So, uh, and then you also have a radio show called Cucina Chatter. Yeah, which is everything we talk about around the kitchen table. Which is great. And- and, yeah, so it can be fit always comes back to the food because, you know, that's just it's in our DNA. Everything revolves around food. But we talk about everything at the kitchen table. Right. And that's how I learned everything about life, which might be why I'm such a spinot. I don't know. <laughs> well, the thing is, it's why I started this radio show here, Lorraine. It's, the, it's because mm-hmm. my passion is food. It brings people together. It's it's a love mm-hmm. of and I love every culture. Every culture is centered around the dining table and food, and it is where we learn the most. It's it's where we learn right. about relationships and love, and and laughter and joy. It's it, it is everything. So and and heartache and and aggravation. I mean, come on, let's face it. You can get pretty rough around the table, right? Uh, absolutely. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There there's a there's a scene in Saturday Night Fever where he slaps him across the back of the head. Like to me, that's that's a typical uh, dinner table. That's uh, exactly. You know, it's pretty funny. But um, so tell us about this weekend's event. Well, I, I was wonderful because of all the the stuff I've been doing with food over the past few years. Um, you know, people are thinking I'm a chef, and I, I thought I was too until I got out there and realized, okay, humility really goes a long way. But I'm, I'm the cook next door. So I was tapped to be involved in this food show. The uh, Philadelphia Inquirer, which is our big newspaper, is the uh, key sponsor behind the food and travel show. They do it every year at a local convention center. This year it's at a a casino in Valley Forge, which is relatively new. So when I got talking to the organizer, he said, oh, my, looking at my background, he said, instead of doing a demo, would you mind doing some emceeing? I said, not at all. It'd be great. Yeah. So that's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm going to, which I love doing that more than anything. I hear you. I am you. going to do a demo. <laughs> What's that? I said, I hear you. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, I get I mean, it. That's my first first love is radio and, and the microphone. I don't know why, you know, and if, if we can, you know, mix the microphone. It's just like another utensil. You got your knife, your fork, you're spilling your microphone, right? Right, right. Those are it. That's it. That's all I carry. And, exactly. and, and Yeah, and a swift kick, and I'm good. There it is. <laughs> there it is. So, I get to talk to all the chefs and, and, you know, kind of be the liaison between the chef on stage and the, and the audience. And, and it's going to be a hoot, you know. And uh, I don't expect anybody on the West Coast to come out for it. But, uh, but I, I do. I hope that people will leave their house. I mean, it's what, 14 inches of snow? Right there, right now? Oh, uh, you know what? It's the, you know how it is over here. We I got do. a little snow and everybody goes eight crazy. And it's just not, it's not that bad. It, right. It was deep. What's worse is the cold. It's stinking single digits. That's what we heard. You know, I put yeah. I put in my my phone. I put you know our forecast for the Philadelphia region, and to make myself feel better, I put the city of Fairbanks, Alaska. <laughs> you know, it's been colder here than in darn Fairbanks. <laughs> that sucks. I'm so sorry. Oh my god, I'm uh, sorry. I really am. No, I talked to a friend of mine the other day. She's like, it's not the snow. It's the freaking cold right now. It is yes, so yes. cold, and I'm like, ah, damn. But you got some some great chefs at this event. When, what time's the yeah. event, and how can people find out about it? Because we got to get going. <clears throat> okay, okay. It is uh, well. Just look for Philadelphia. Just Google Philadelphia uh, travel uh, food and travel show. It's all day Saturday, all day Sunday. Valley Forge uh, Casino, and I'll be there with a bunch of great chefs. We're gonna have a ball. All right, great. And people can find out more about Kachina Chatter at kachinachatter dot com. Correct. C-U-C-I-N-A chatter.com. All right. Lorraine, thank you so much for spending a few minutes with us. Thanks for having me, Michelle. Ciao. Okay, ciao. Keep warm. Jesus, Mary and Joseph, single digits. That is not fun. Okay, the Foodie Five. Here we go. Here's this. Where's the sounder?
One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> that, was <the> that was the wrong one. One, two, three, four, five. There it is. I need the food bell. It's like Pavlov's dog. It's, it makes me salivate. Number five. Uh, top 45 today. Uh, this story is not for the faint of heart. So parents in Portsmouth, uh, Portsmouth, Rhode Island, got a disturbing letter from their kids' school this week warning them that the children might be snorting Smarties. Did you guys hear about this? Yeah. They, uh, the middle school sent home a, a panic letter warning parents that middle school kids might be crushing Smarties candy into powder and either snorting it through the nose or smoking it, which is completely gross. I don't get it. The letter warned of the many potential health dangers, but the one that really caught my eye was nasal maggots. Yeah, nasal maggots. When a blogger con- – yeah, I, I don't know. I'm just – my nose is starting to, to shrivel up right now. When a blogger contacted the doctor who warned of these pesky critters hitching a ride in your nasal cavities, what he did, he did say it's possible, but he had never actually had a case of nasal maggots as a result of snorting Smarties. So there you go. Fears, then fears waylaid in one fell swoop. But it was kind of gross. Never heard of that before in my life. Number four. How many of us have been involved in at least one food fight, right? Or stopped our kids from flinging fries at one another at McDonald's? According to The Local, uh, a online mag, a woman was eating with her family in a McDonald's near Bordeaux in France when another customer decided he could take no more waiting in line. He grabbed a nearby potato wedge and whipped it at a McDonald's employee. But, unfortunately, his aim was off. He's not going to be a baseball player or a pitcher. Instead, the potato wedge smashed right into the eye of the woman who had just been minding her own business. I want an official Red Rider Cup in action to and show Wayne's Ball Air Rifle. No. Shoot your eye out. <laughs> yeah. How big are these potato wedges? Because apparently the wedge actually scratched the woman's cornea and she had to go to the hospital. Now, doctors told her to stay home from work for 10 days due to the injury. She had 10 days off because she got a potato wedge in her eye and it scratched her cornea. I don't know. Uh, the, woman fo- <laughs> the woman filed a report with the police, but it is yet unknown if the investigation is underway or if the fry thrower will be apprehended. It's kind of funny. Now, the next story... Um, I'm going to throw out because we got some breaking news today about Mr. Justin Bieber. Can I get you guys on on uh, on mic for this, uh, Sarah and uh, Tyler? So I don't know if you guys have been, uh, uh, you know, know, online story. this this morning. Sarah, tell morning. tell me the story because I had to do the story this morning from <laughs> uh, for the news station that I do oh. in Florida. So uh, apparently, Justin Bieber was uh, drag racing. And he was arrested in, in Florida, in Florida, in Miami, this would be in Florida, in Miami, <laughs> in Miami. He was drag and racing. He was doing drugs. Now, allegedly, allegedly. thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not making assumptions. Right, right, right. <laughs> allegedly doing uh, drugs. He was arrested mm-hmm. for a DUI. Now he, but he was drinking something. It wasn't alcohol, was it? No, it was not alcohol. Uh, you asked me to come on and speak about the prevalence of scissor up, which is the drug that is, uh, <laughs> I guess, the drug du jour for Justin Bieber because uh, it's a mixture of codeine, which is basically cough syrup, wow. and uh, Sprite or Dr Pepper, Mountain Dew, whatever, and then you drop one Jolly Rancher into your Styrofoam cup. So no Smarties. No Smarties. This is like the theme of <laughs> what is your it? It's it, right. it's like food yeah. and drugs right. together. Yeah. Uh, that's called an administration it's supposed to make you really <laughs> messed up so uh, that's what justin bieber was doing and uh, he got caught up with it wow so but scissor up like what the scissor up scissor up also called syrup. lean it's also called lean <laughs> lean because you're leaning you know when you're walking out, when so you're drinking lean, right you're like, <laughs> i am lean. so white what We're is so, so wait you're so, it's lean, basically, one of the slang terms is lean because... We lean with it, rock you, with it? Well, I guess you could say that, but when you're drinking it, it messes you up so much you can't stand up straight. Really? Yeah. Don't ask me how I know. <laughs> I know, right? Wait a second. <laughs> but I don't understand what's messing you up. There's no... Is there... The high-strength codeine or promethazine. Yeah, that's what I was like, this is not like your syrup. Robitussin you're getting in the store. You have Got to order it. this from like a pharmacy with a doctor's note. Man, what is it? You know, it's like doctors must immediately attach themselves to stars. You know what I mean? I mean, mm-hmm. between Michael Jackson right. and Elvis and, 
And now, like, it's like they're just giving like a cult. This, it's like a cult. It's like the doctors surround the stars to make sure it, it all comes down to money, really. Mm-hmm. It's all making sure that they perform. Mm-hmm. But that's crazy. Scissor, scissor, scissor. Maybe we can get one of his people in the studio making some for us next time. Uh, yeah, I think we should. I feel like it's to promote his new movie. <laughs> you do? He's in, a mo- he's in a movie? Yeah, he just created his like, new Bieber movie. Oh, my goodness. He was like, I'm quitting the music business. Just kidding. I feel I, I feel bad for him because I, I do. I feel bad for him because, you know, everybody loved him for years and now everybody's hating him. And I think he's going through some mental torment right now. And I, I do. I feel bad for him, him. Miley Cyrus. It's like a. Well, yeah, Miley, I don't know that I feel bad for him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Miley, I don't feel bad for him. That girl's just whack. All right. So that was uh, I don't even know what that is, but we're going to that was number three. OK, number two, TV host and avid flyer Alton Brown stopped by security at, air, at the airport. And he was stopped by security at the airport for what? The head of Transportation Security Administration said that there was absolutely no way he was getting on a plane with something that dangerous. What was it? You ask. Was it one of Alton's knives? It was an omelet pan. Yeah. Apparently, he received a box containing the pan a few weeks later after he did a major blog about it. TSA. Tisk tisk. Number one. You're number one. Where's the drum roll? I thought Beaver was number one. <laughs> a funeral home in Naples, Florida. It's all about Florida today. Florida and the FDA. Uh, Florida has installed what is calling the first ever wine cellar inside a funeral parlor. Seth Minson, the general manager at Hodges Funeral Home, tells local news agency WBBH H, I'm sorry that the idea etch a sketch the idea came about as a way to offer some families a different way to grieve they still want to have a party but they want to celebrate in different means today so now there's a funeral home with a wine cellar I'm sure there'll be a TV show about that soon so there it is your top foodie five coming up next we're really excited about it Stephen Fretz from the Church Key is here with us, and so much more, so stay with us. All right. That is so (laughs) cute, really, seriously. Uh, Welcome back to Pure Polino. My name is Michelle Polino, and on Thursdays, it's all about culinary culture. And today, we have a packed show, and I'm really excited about it, but right now, we're going to introduce to you a guy named Stephen Fretz. He's a chef. He graduated from the California Culinary Academy in San Fran in 99 and was promptly honored with her Award of Excellence in Culinary Achievement. That's a pretty big honor. His first position was at the kitchen of George Marone. I think that, I hope I'm saying that right. Yeah. At fifth floor where Fretz rose from manager to sous chef in six months, eventually leading the team to a four-star review from the San Francisco Chronicle. After a few years there, Fretz joined the team at Mina Group by accepting the executive sous chef position at their new restaurant, Redwood Park. Mm. In this role, Fretz was able to start creating more freely, exploring what his own culinary style would be. After leading that uh, to a three and a half stars, which is kind of awesome from the San Francisco Chronicle, um, he went on to Arcadia. Fretz, Fretz once again reunited with Moroni in Australia, where he consulted on developing over 350 recipes for wildfire in Sydney. That's kind of cool you're in Sydney. We'll get to that in a minute. Yeah. Anxious to realize a long-time goal of being the sole creator of a menu. He returned to San Fran to open Tartar, yeah. uh, whose menu pushed boundaries of reimagining classic dishes. Following stops in New York, San Fran, Detroit, you, my man, are a world traveler. Uh, after receiving Best Restaurant and Four Stars at Saltwater, Fretz landed in L.A. as executive chef of 14, which was really popular here for a while. Mm, yeah. And then you went to work with Curtis Stone. I did, yeah. Uh, which we were talking about outside, and it was from there uh, that you left and are now heading up the kitchen at the Church Key. Chef Fretz, welcome to the show. It's awesome to be here. Thanks for having me. So cool. I'm going to fix your mic. Ah, okay. uh, there get it is. In there. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so first of all, tell me a little bit about the concept of Church Key. Where did that come from for you? I don't know where the concept really came from. I mean, it was when I took on the project with with the partners or the owners of the business. Um, I, I, I met up with Joseph Sabato, who's the, the general manager. We're both we're both uh, managing partners as well, and and uh, we just started getting drunk every night at the bar. <laughs> while, 
I love this. No, no. While, while we were just, you know, trying to conceptualize what we were what we were going to do, right? right? And so right. we came up with we came up with first it started with cocktail carts is what it started with, yeah, right? which like, are oh. really popular. Yeah. And then we we were we were, we were we were drinking and we were thinking about like, oh, it'd be fun to do like mini cocktail carts, like the mini bottle carts and do like mini bottle cocktails. And then it just kind of went from there at 14. Um, we were a small plate concept. So it's it's something that I was able to execute or we were able to execute at 14 really well. And then we just it's just started Going from building there. from there, building from there. We knew that we couldn't do a strictly uh, dim sum restaurant, right? That would just require uh, too many carts, too much this. It, right. We didn't we didn't have the infrastructure or the money to just say, okay, we we could do it this way. Right. Um, so we we developed an a la carte menu as well, along with the dim sum. Right. Um, we didn't initially know we were going to call it dim sum, but it just we kept gravitating t- back towards saying it was dim sum. You know, it's interesting because I think it's always when you come, you get into these creative, uh, you know, I guess, junctures in your life. I think you let it evolve. And it sounds like that's what you did. You let it evolve and it named itself in many ways. It, it, it did. And, you know, when we're talking about modern American food, you know, I think it's become uh, cuisine because of media, because of everything we have at our fingertips to we modern american food has become a melting pot of literally everything right right i mean right. it's just everything it is it's everything put together and it's a, and it's about you know obviously sourcing the best local ingredients you can find and you're using your imagination yeah and together that creates something completely wonderful that's what makes a great chef i think <laughs> well <laughs> I, I hope so um <laughs> it's it's been a fun it's been a fun journey um we the dim sum has taken a, a, on a life of its own. It, right. It really has. When we when we opened the church key, we we had like maybe eight things on the dim sum carts. Um, the dim sum carts, they begin in the evening with with business permitting, right? Like if I can't send out five carts of food with two people in the dining room, no, I mean, you can't. I'm running a business. Um, but the dim sum carts, I mean, now we're up to 20, 22, 23 so items on a Friday, Saturday night. You yeah. Know? Um, and yeah, there's an enormous amount of, of creativity that goes into them. We have a lot of fun with them. I have a, I have an extraordinary team. Right. Um, I have uh, Ryan Osowski, who is my chef, to quiz, who is my chef de cuisine. Um, he was my executive sous at, at 14, and eventually he, when I left 14, he took over as the executive chef there. Um, I have my I have Jesus Samudio, who was my sous chef. I have my, my almost my entire team from right. 14. Well, um, I think every chef, it, it's like any business. I was reading an article about Oprah the other day, and it's like when you surround yourself with the people that you trust and that are great at what they do, you can only get greater. And and that's kind of the way uh, a restaurant, a good restaurant is run. Absolutely. I can't, I, I, I couldn't even conceivably do what we do there without the team that I have. Right. Without Ryan, without Chewy, uh, without Jeff. Right. I mean, those are my guys. I mean- yeah, yeah. And, and with that trust and, and with that reliability and with their creativity along with yours, it's this beautiful mesh. What What is it that inspires you? What is it that inspires some of these dishes? Like, I just want to talk about, um, like, you in, not your dim sum, but from the kitchen. Now, you have the dim sum on carts, <laughs> and then you have yeah. your kitchen uh, menu, k- kitchen creations. Yeah. And a couple of them that blew me away was the crispy pork belly. Yeah. Talk about that. Well, listen, I mean, I think as chefs, we're all obsessed with pork. Um, <laughs> you, It is. It's such a true. <laughs> that is the truest statement I've ever heard in my life, right? It's just so good, you know? You got to love the pig. You got to love the pig. Right. Listen, I... I, I <laughs> Yeah, we pork belly. You brine it, you know. You you brine it. You sous vide it for forty eight hours. You press it. You 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 cook it. Okay, uh, the it, it came from eating it at Parks Barbecue in Koreatown. I mean, that's it. I ripped it off. What do you want from me? Uh, well, that, uh, the go, that go chang, uh, was it the gochang glaze? Go, goji jang. Goji jang. No, no I, it, it was okay. It was. I didn't rip. They didn't do goji jang glaze. But you pork wanted. Belly. You fell in love with something. I fell in love you, with goji jang, which right. is. Um, a glaze that they did with their broccolini, which was one of their sides. Mm. And, and I thought, you know, I was actually there with Ryan. I was actually there with Michael Mina uh, um, before the restaurant opened. And we were like, I, I do this cashew butter, which is, you know, just um, uh, blend, really blanching, blanching cashews until they're like, you can press through them and then blending them with brown butter. Uh-huh. And then that makes a, a cashew butter. That sounds so 
and, and we, that sounds so good. And we served that with the with the goji jinglays, pork belly, and a radish, a radish like a radish sprout salad. Clean it off with that radish salad. So that that's that's kind of where that all came from. We we I just we had to have pork belly on the menu, and we found a place for it. Yeah, and that sounds like amazing. Um, what was the other one that I thought was just incredible? Uh, the Thai snapper looked at looked. That's, yeah, that's my that's kind of. Uh, how do you say it without sounding pretentious? That's Don't like my san- that's my it. signature dish. It's um. There's nothing wrong. With I didn't want to put it on this menu. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Excuse me. You need um, water. Oh. It's all right. We're it's all good. This is very relaxed. <laughs> but um, the snapper was um was on the cover. I, I won best new chef 2009 Angelino. Okay, uh, and Angelino magazine. And that's the dish that that kind of won me that. Right. And I wasn't gonna put it on the church key menu. It was kind of a part of my past, and um. It it found its way back. It found its way back. Now is it <laughs> is it the same thing that you've done, or did you add some? No, I mean I made some adjustments to it mm-hmm. um, a little bit, but it's it's virtually the same dish. Yeah. Um, so let's talk a little bit about this concept. You sat there and you. Uh, it's very interesting. You guys started with drinks. Well, it was. I mean, and we were in an empty restaurant, and it was just Joseph and I, and and we had we we literally conceptualized the entire restaurant and 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 executed it in in less than two months. So <laughs> that's an incredible timeline for a restaurant. I know. I, it, it, that's it, almost unheard of. Well, I mean, obviously it got pushed back, but the, when we originally conceptualized it, we had we had two months with our investors. They want they want you know they wanted they wanted to get it open. So it can investors, but at the same time, they made you move fast. <laughs> they do, they do, they do. Um, so we wanted it to be different, right? right. So obviously, we we got a hold of we. There's 40 seats in this restaurant. I mean, 40 seats. There's 40 seats at the bar in this restaurant. Wow. So the bar takes up a substantial amount of real estate in your dining room. So we wanted we wanted a radical um, bar 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 director, and and we and we were able to to get Devin Espinoza and he's he's a rock star man well he's just he he, he really understands alcohol and uh, we're grateful to have him and he's just been an amazing part of the creative process and um with the food and with the carts and with everything he's just he understands food as well he went to he graduated from the CIA as well so he's he's really intuitive and, and really great to work with Let's uh, explain for the folks uh, listening and watching what what is it that's different about these cocktails because you know a, a substan- like you said a substantial amount of your restaurant is taken up by that bar. Yeah. And uh, even in Jonathan Gold's review, he said the same thing. Yeah. And I hear nothing but rave reviews about these cocktails. Yeah. So let's talk about them for a minute. Well, I brought the the here here you go. Right. Here's his special. Here you go. There's some Give there's me some, a cocktail. I got yeah. you. I came prepared. <laughs> Um, um, so what makes them different? You know, okay, Devin makes his, the, the church keys house gin and tonic. We make our own tonic and it's, um, you it, make it, your own tonic, we make our own tonic. Okay. Yeah. So it's a, it's a long process. It's not like the tonic that you, you traditionally know of. Um, it's like a dark fermented, t- I don't know if I'm saying that right. Devin's going to kick my ass. Nah, he'll be fine. Um, but, um, yeah, it's, it's a beautiful cock, the pink lips. Yeah. So um, you have a, and, and do they. So these are the bar cocktails, and there's also cocktails that come over in carts where yeah. they're infused with. Yeah, so we do we do liquid nitrogen otter pops. That's what I wanted. That's that was it. Yeah. You had those. Yeah. You did. Come on microphone. Come on microphone. They're so, amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I still remember them. <laughs> so what was amazing about them? I think the way they, the way it like. I, I can't explain it. Like it becomes cool. Like the way they um, pour it in there, and then it like I think it was a mango and strawberry that they had at the uh, Filipino. Yeah, we, yeah, we did a event. Filipino. Yeah, mango. I can't. I can't remember. No, we did uh, ma- uh, green, 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 green mango and something. I forget. Yeah, it was phenomenal. I was like, all the Filipinos were like raving about it. <laughs> really? Did yeah. Did you try the <laughs> liquid nitrogen? I'm like, because <laughs> you held a fundraiser. Tell them yeah, about the yeah, fundraiser. Yeah. yeah, it was for the Typhoon event, and um, I was so lucky to come for Pure Polino, and it was incredible. And I met St- Stephen there, and he um, blew me away with all his food. And yeah, and the cocktails. And the cocktails. So they goodness. infuse the liquid nitrogen so, into the glass. You have a picture. It's on like your magic. Pure Polino. It's like magic. There. I love magic. Yeah, it's on your home. It's, yeah. So you just. <laughs> it's better 
better than the Magic Castle, people. <laughs> so true. So yeah. true. So um, they're fun. Yeah, they're done table side, and they're done. Uh, girls in Pan Am, um, our little stewardesses Pan yeah, in right. Pan, Am, Pan Am. We we actually got that's the original Pan Am um, uniform. We oh my god. We, we were able to uh, purchase the uh, not purchase they they give you rights to it. You know the all the drama. Yeah. But anyway, it's the original. It's the original um, sketch, and we had them made. That's fantastic. Um, but uh, yeah, they go around liquid nitrogen. We also do canned cocktails. Talk about that. Because so right now that's not appealing to me. But um, make it appealing. It's fun. I mean, because you, know you know what a church key is. It's a can opener. It's a can opener. Right? So, right? It's, the, it's the ones with the point yeah, at the end, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we thought, well, well, geez. So we got enameled cans, right? Because did you, you say, really say geez? <laughs> I did. <laughs> All right. I just and I'm going to say check. it again. Okay, good. <laughs> um, <laughs> I had some of that, what, that syrup? Yeah, you know? right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> We're going to put syrup in a can. We're going to call it Bieber's Cocktails. Yeah. Syrup at the church key. There it is. We did it first. Oh, I need 10% of this. Because <laughs> you know it's going to go off the charts. Uh, that's People awesome. People will order it. I'm they doing will. it tonight. Okay. Um. So what were we, uh, talking about? we were talking about the church key okay. and the canned cocktails. Okay, I really so, want to know. So we yeah we bought a canning machine. Um, we we found enamel coated cans which will allow alcohol to be in them. Um, you know, and uh, yeah we we. <clears throat> I don't know. Is that enamel keeps the enamel keeps the keeps them from oxidizing? The, ah. Keeps the liquor from oxidizing. Okay. So um we that we went through some tests with that. But we eventually figured out why. God, there was a lot of testing going on, yeah, right? Of course there is. Um, Did you guys do any pop ups at all? I mean, because you know, <clears throat> as a test, because I know a lot of chefs do that. Yeah, we did. A, we did a week of we did a week of dinners. Um, we did more dinners before that. Yeah, we did. We did a lot of tests. Yeah. Yeah. We had to. <laughs> You're like this, we did a lot of tests. But the canned cocktails are fun. They're poor table side. We have like sphered ice and big, huge square ice, and my freezer's just packed jam-packed with different ice and we we call it you know frozen water come here get your girlfriend in this shot because these two are the cutest couple ever <laughs> i want i you can't obviously my radio listeners can't see her but she's absolutely gorgeous and they are the cutest couple ever Aww. so and what is your name and, and bring her mic over if you can you can you can actually share the mic oh thank you vladi vladlina uh, vladina uh, are you uh, russian I'm Latvian. Uh, Latvian. Okay. Yeah. Did you have you guys gone to Marivana yet? Yes, oh, yeah. it's my favorite. <laughs> Absolutely, my really? favorite. Well, she goes to. She's, yeah. She New she's York, like a regular LA, in New York. I love it. Absolutely. Really? The, you've it's been the, food. But it's you've been to the one in L.A. Right? Yes. The one on Melrose Place. Because uh, yeah. we we're having them in in a couple of weeks for Sochi. Oh, oh nice. this is yeah. Awesome. We're celebrating Sochi. They're sweet, and I have very good friends who are Russian. So uh, yeah, that's yeah. Her, she's like Mary Vanna royalty. She goes to every <laughs> single one. Is of that right? Absolutely love it. Absolutely. No, I had the herring uh, salad the other night, and I thought that was fantastic. Yeah. And then the uh, smoked. Um, what do we have? What else? I had everything. The smoked. They do this. What the no? Yeah, smoked, smoked uh, sturgeon. Yeah, smoked, smoked sturgeon. sturgeon. Yeah. I had the smoked sturgeon, the herring salad. Uh, and those little meat b pies. Oh, yeah, the, awesome. the Peruskis. Yeah, yeah the Peruskis. Yeah. And then the honey pie. Yeah. I was like, hmm. Uh, <laughs> Mary Vanna is, it's fantastic. Yeah. It's delicious food. How long have you been together? One year. Oh, yeah. You're totally in love. Uh, well, <laughs> when, uh, when, <laughs> we're balanced. I don't know how to cook and he cooked for me, so it's awesome. Hello. <laughs> When's your birthdays? Look, I know. I got to do their signs. Uh, Isn't it horrible? I'm a Leo. You're a Leo. Six. Of course you are. I'm a Virgo. And a Virgo. A Leo and a Virgo. I love the Leo Virgo. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, but I, And where did you meet? Did you meet in a restaurant? In we, Florida. We met at the South Beach Food and Wine Festival. Oh, my God, really? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Florida, Florida comes Florida, up. This, the Florida... This, you're going to do a beaver cocktail. Beaver cocktail. <laughs> Pure Polino's Shiz getting 10%. What is it? Shizurp? Shizurp. Shizurp. They're going to be They're going to be popping up all over every restaurant. Everybody's got to get in on it now. Um, so that's really cute. I re that's really nice. Do you and influence I, him at all as far as food? Yeah, absolutely. the pink lips on I this is that. my cocktail over here, and it's after. absolutely amazing. The, the pink. <laughs> <laughs> I love you guys. Of course, it's the pink lips. Oh my god, I love you. Of course, it's vodka because you're Russian, Latvian. I'm sorry. <laughs> yes. There's a difference. Yeah. Um, with lime, palma, es palma espuma. Palma espuma. What is? Espuma is a. Um, it's a, a liquid that's um, 
Uh, okay, how do I get this out quick? Um, it's, you can turn it's been it infused with uh, protein, so in this case, gelatin, and then it's it's uh, extracted out of an uh, an ISI, uh, an, a whip a whipped cream container. Oh my gosh! So it's uh, super. Oh, I'm airy. totally trying this. Oh yeah, it's <laughs> it's our it's our number one cocktail. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god! I've got some nice champagne. So it's I was just gonna say, yeah, I, was, I need a little champagne here, and we have it. But in there's that some cocktail. fun ones. The shut shut the funk up. <laughs> um, the gold rain. <laughs> I love that. That might be my favorite. And then at the bottom, the hectic. You know, when when Devin when Devin was tasting me on the cocktails, not tasting me. I don't mean to say that. <laughs> but when when we were, when we were tasting the cocktails, I was like, "That's hectic." And that and that was the name. So he was like, "Well, that's what we're naming that cocktail." Oh my gosh, that is awesome. I love these. I love these. Love these. Love these. Um, all right, guys. I know we have to go because we got Julie Wolfson coming in for um, to take a look at the uh, a report from the Fancy Food Fest, which awesome. I'm really excited about. Very cool. Uh, and we didn't get to talk all about the great stuff that we were talking about in the green room, but I would love to have you guys back. Maybe even do a big show with Marivano. That would be a lot of That'd fun. That'd be great. They're yeah. beautiful Absolutely. people. I love them all. Yeah, they're really sweet. Yeah. Um, and thanks for taking the time. The Church Key. Uh, you ha- you guys have to check it out. Church Key LA is that the the church? Yeah, Church Key LA dot com. Uh, hashtag Church Key LA at the Church Key LA. All that fun stuff. You know? Yeah, and uh, well, good luck. I think it's I think it's going great. And obviously, you got you've been getting great reviews. Jonathan Gold gave it a great review. So and it's it seems like it's fun plus great food, and that is something rare. We wanted to create. Okay, we wanted to create a fun environment. We right. we wanted to take the douchiness out of LA. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and we we just there it is. we there want it is. it's a fun place to come, and uh, the foods the foods great, the cocktails are extraordinary, um, you know, and we have a great front of the house staff. All right, perfect. Well, guys, thank you so much. Thanks for being here. So awesome to be here. All guys. right, thank coming you. up next, Julie Wolfson. Stay with us. Hey guys, this is Bob Merrick, the host of The Bob Show. Accentuate the positive in your life and in pop culture from nine to eleven a.m. on UBNRadio.com. We are experts at video production. We have crews in over 100 cities and the finest editors in the world. It's fun to create your videos, and that's what we love doing. We're good at that. But the most important thing is how do you use those videos? How do you leverage your video investment? We provide all the platforms to do that. Website design, social media, SEO, PR, and television. And all of those components do a dance that work in tandem with each other for a comprehensive marketing campaign that really helps grow your business. Listen for me every Wednesday night at 6 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. Only on UBNRadio.com. Now that you've found UBN Radio and discovered our quality talk shows, it's time to spread the word to friends, family, and the universe. 24 hours of music and talk. Radio without limits. That's why people keep coming back for more. That's UBNRadio.com. Okay, we are back, Pierre Polino. Having a great day. Having a great show. I didn't expect it. It was really great because I have my team with me. Woo woo! And of course, Julie Wolfson is back from West Coast's largest specialty and food and beverage trade show in San Francisco. It is the Fancy Food Show. Uh, it is probably one of the most important food shows, I think. For the specialty food, gourmet, and grocery item um, community, absolutely. Right. So, Julie, welcome home. Thank you. My feet are tired. I'll bet. You have been, I've been, of course, we follow, everybody follows each other. All over social media, and I've yeah. been watching how those cafes in San Fran. I have the best time. Right. So right. we'll get to the fancy food show in a minute, but I did get to several cafes, some that I'd been to, and some brand new ones. I went to Trick Dog for coffee in the right. in Russian Hill. Okay, nice. And then I walked down to South Market, right. over by the convention center, went to Sight Glass, which was so always much. one of right. my favorites. Right. Then one morning I did a little quick coffee crawl in the Mission District. <sighs> Linnea Cafe is the bomb. The bomb. The bomb. Phenomenal coffee, amazing coffee oh professionals, handmade waffles, locals. It was serious. <laughs> that makes me go nuts. I love I, ceramics cups. I mean, the whole thing. Oh I wanted to move in right. and finally learn how to really, really make coffee and right. just work for them. Yeah. Uh, then I walked to Wrecking Ball Coffee, it has right. a walk up window. 
Heath Ceramics has a blue bottle coffee bar inside their new tile factory headquarters store. It was all kinds of magic. <laughs> it sounds like it's all kind of magic. And I'm so glad that you you had that opportunity. It's like super fun. Yeah. I mean, these are these are great, great experiences that you're having right now. It's really fun. And San Francisco's such a fun coffee town. It I is. I think it's Ritual. one of the best. Actually. I always go to Four Barrel. And there's so many new places opening, and they're just, you know, they do it in an interesting way. Everyone's doing a little bit their own way. Some are roasting, some are sourcing coffees, you know, which is so many different interesting things going on in San Francisco. It's amazing. I left my heart there a little, but a I little. brought it back to But you brought LA. it back. <laughs> you brought it back, because sooner or later, you're going to be sitting in a handsome roasters going, ah. Hi, guys. <laughs> How's it going? Right. What you're roasting. Okay. Yeah. So tell us a, a little bit about, now tell us everything you can about the Fancy Food Festival. Okay. Here okay. we go. Here we go. Apparently, okay. there are 80,000 foods. 80,000? And my job for cool hunting was to find 10 really cool ones. How do you... How do you do that? Well, some of it's research and some of it's companies I know or things that I've been looking for coming down the pike. Right. Some of it is people I've gotten to know through the last few years going to the fancy food show or companies that I know because they make interesting products. But a lot of it is walking aisle to aisle to aisle, glancing at each thing, looking at what I think they've got, whether it looks like it's something interesting or I've heard about or something new that... I need to know about yeah and I run down each aisle and I try to stop only when something is absolutely necessary and in seven hours I basically walked the whole show oh, I think I walked past at least 90% of the booths I mean occasionally there's got to be one that slips because it's around a corner or something that's huge it was exhausting. It was fun. I met a cheesemaker from Devon, England. I met the people who make salami for Ollie. Oh Salamaria. I mean, it was super cool. Then I ran into Chef Ricardo Zarate because I looked for him in the Peruvian section and thought, oh, Ricardo's got to be here. Right. And I couldn't find him. And I thought, oh, I should have asked him before if he was going to be at the show. Walked out the front of the show at the end of the day. And there he was standing wow. there with Brian Husky, who had just been on Top wow. Chef. And it was one of those moments wow. where you're like, I knew you guys were going to yeah, be yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what was your biggest, I mean, there there has to be moments that really stood out to you. Uh, Absolutely. Um, I visited my friends at McConnell's Ice Cream. Right. Everything they're doing is amazing. All organic, is it? Organic. They source their own um, I love organic dairy. ice cream. It's like my new they thing. They have their own dairy in Santa Barbara. They're making Eureka Lemon with Marion Berry Preserves ice cream. They're doing new sorbets. They're doing everything pretty much perfectly. Yeah. They're pretty much perfect in yeah. my eyes. And next week I'm going to go to the dairy and nice. kind of go behind the scenes. But I think what they're doing is amazing. Nice. Um, there was a place uh, called Gelato by Naya and they make a series called Bar Gelato and they were frozen ice cream bars but they had Blue Bottle Coffee, St. George Whiskey. Wow. Each fruit was listed from which farm. I mean, this was the best little ice cream break ever. As you're running up and down the aisles, you're like, I just need to take a quick breath. And someone handed me a St. George single malt whiskey ice cream bar. Holy shay. <laughs> <laughs> I know I was supposed to be trying gluten-free crisps or something, but I'd much rather have single malt whiskey and ice cream. Yeah. So would I. So would I. Yeah. And so will we, you think we'll be able to get that in supermarkets soon? Or Yeah, I think that line is somewhere in Southern California. Right. have to check and see where they, right. who carries them. Right. Um, but their stuff is amazing. We're going to go over. I just, I'm telling you right now. <laughs> okay, we're going over. Okay, so also there was shellfish there, which was interesting. Shellfish. I saw the owner of Sullivan Harbor in Maine. They catch their own salmon. It goes directly into their smokehouse. And the next thing coming down the pike from them is tequila infused smoked salmon. Oh and I got God. to taste it, the prototype for it. It's awesome. Tequila infused smoked, smoked salmon. salmon. Yeah, baby. In your supermarket soon. Soon. And Shucks, which is a lobster company. I know and of they Shucks. also will basically have some sort of magical process for getting raw lobster out of the shell so that they can sell it raw for chefs to cook it from raw without having to start with the shell and everything, which is kind of awesome. Oh, that's really awesome. Really good. And Jose Andres has launched a line of canned and jarred products. And so he has sauces that are Spanish tapas sauces that are basically like short term, like uh, 
what's what did I call it? A shortcut to like really authentic Spanish food. Plus, he has canned scissor clams, mussels, uni. Um, canned uni? Yeah, I don't. I didn't actually end up trying the canned uni, <laughs> I was add. but I did have uh, some of the clams. I had a sardine. How was it? I had one of the tuna. It was all really good. Really? I mean, if you're gonna have to go from canned, you may as well go from the best can. Right. And there's certain recipes that canned actually really works for. Yeah, there are. I, I, I there definitely are. So that was really exciting to see. And they had all these recipes, and a chef sitting there, like sautéing mushrooms and putting in this purple garlic and some of the bit of the sauce that they've made and. I'm thinking I'm not at the bazaar or, you know, one of his restaurants in That's DC, but it tasted pretty darn good. Yeah. I was impressed. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff. What do you think people went nuts for? What were, what were some of the nuts? Nuts? <laughs> <laughs> um, I brought you Justin's nut butters. No that almond oh. maple is literally one of our house favorites. Really? And they're just debuting those tiny packs because they're trying to help us maple, not eat so almond, much. Maple, almond, butter. Not butter. Gonna, so good. And gonna, they had small peanut butter cups made with artisanal chocolate I'm and handmade nut butter. Yeah. What they're doing is really great. Yeah. And uh, mm. <laughs> and we're ripping it open and eating oh, it. Oh, yeah, we are. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought nuts was interesting. People were doing like dried chickpeas, saying that that has sort of more protein and less I saw fat a couple, yeah. than, um, than eating pure nuts. It was interesting. There's a lot of gluten-free crisps and crackers and a lot flowers of and a lot of gluten-free. I'm always interested, but I don't eat gluten-free, right. so I kind of... Pay well, some, some attention. attention. You have to pay some attention because there's many, many people out there that are gluten free. And um, I met a company that sources directly Madagascar of vanilla, mm. and they sell the beans. They powder it so you can basically make vanilla bean into your recipe, like when you see a vanilla bean in an ice cream, right? But put it into baked goods. And they also do extracts and different. Okay, great. <laughs> no, no, no. Keep going. Uh, in different concentrations, and it was fun because it was a group of a couple of people who'd been in the Peace Corps, and wow. they loved Madagascar so much. They started working with farmers there, and now the work that they do helps all these farming communities in Madagascar. Which um, I like that kind that, of do that's, gooding deliciousness. <laughs> that's awesome. You, when you put do good and food, good food together, uh, I think it's a recipe for success. So I know I'm supposed to be into all these, you know, newfangled products, right? But my, I think my favorite moment of the show, and I had several, was meeting Bonnie Storm and Nina Talcott. Tell me who they are. They live in Napa. They're two adorable women born in 1945. Oh, my God. Who have an olive oil company. But the greatest thing is the olive oil is delicious, and the package is awesome. Oh, my God. They it's were an born aluminum in jar with a pewter label, and what's inside is delicious. How cool are they? This Is it organic olive oil? Yeah. Oh, my and gosh. these women, you don't have to be 22 to be cool. They're awesome. They were born in 1945, and I seriously almost made plans with them for drinks <laughs> after the show, but it was like scheduling wise like i'm gonna go up to napa and visit them oh my gosh all right They're that like, is a great takeaway so the the name of their company is grove 45, 45. they're two old older ladies they are wonderful they and, are super cool oh my gosh extra virgin olive oil organic grove 45 is the name of their product and oh my god i think they sell it jones on third and a few other places jones in on third los angeles right, but great. look on their website they've got all of their um stockists there. okay one more thing before we go anything you want to go because i know we're running over but anything any anything for our listeners you do have an article coming out on this it's on, on cool hunting today a few great. hours ago so please check cool hunting it's my roundup and several uh, feature stories will come down the pike in the next couple of weeks uh, people that we want to investigate a little more but there's a list of about five products that we decided to highlight today, and they're all delicious. All right, we got to go. Follow her at Julie Wilson. Follow Pure Polino at Pure Polino. Take care. Have a great weekend.